electronic voting is a, is a topic that, that has been explored in computer science for two decades or more. I think the most likely implementation of electronic voting will be for trivial matters between distributed system nodes. Like for example, how do we get uh, a thousand BGP routers to decide that a certain BGP route is malicious? Well, how about they use a pseudo coin to vote through low level mining in their BGP routing tables so they can basically create a verifiable blacklist of malicious BGP routes. That's an example of where you would use electronic voting in a distributed system. Essentially, take advantage of the consensus Byzantine general problem solution to solve a distributed computing problem. Now, if you start generalizing that, you can see how there is a possibility of creating a pseudo coin which is distributed to the population, much like you get mailing, mailed election cards in the mail, and you have a register of elections. But instead, what you're doing is you're getting a digital token that you execute uh, through your smartphone. The difference is that now you can verify that your vote is counted, and you can verify the fairness of the election independently, the way each Bitcoin node independently verifies every transaction in the security of the network. You don't depend on any counterparty to tell you that it happened or didn't happen. Um, it's not an easy problem. I expect uh, electronic voting will probably take decades. Um, but it is within the capability of the system. So don't know how to solve it. I'm sure there are many, many really smart computer scientists uh, who are working on exactly that. <coughs> sure. Can you touch base on the best way currently to secure your private bitcoins that you own? Oh, really great question. Um, this is going to be a problem, especially in the next year. Uh, we're not quite ready to go mainstream. The, the fundamental problem is this. Um, as a species, we have four and a half million years of experience on how to do physical security. From the moment the first caveman hit a squirrel under a rock so the other caveman wouldn't eat it. And in fact, he learned that from the squirrel who was hiding nuts for four and a half billion years. So, um, physical security is something that is intuitively understandable to humans, as part of our culture and has been embedded so deep in our culture that it is a semantic paradigm that we don't even think of. It becomes automatic. We implement physical security in every aspect of our life, and, and it is embedded to the point where children learn how to do physical security at a very, very young age. It's part of our cultural meme. Digital security is something we've been doing for 50 years, and we suck at it. <laughs> and now we just put billions of dollars into the domain of digital security, and we don't know how to secure it. So the basic problem is we have these general purpose operating systems, and I count all of them, right? Windows, Mac, Linux, probably in that, range, in that order of mo least to most security, right? And if you put your digital wallets on a Windows general purpose operating system, you run a very, very high risk of being compromised. Uh, we don't know how to secure these operating systems. I've been working in security for more than 15, uh, probably more than 20 years now. And uh, one of the things I know is that I assume my machine has been compromised. And not just by the NSA. I assume it's been compromised several times by many different organizations. Uh, I don't trust my own operating system. I could forensically verify the security of my operating system. It would take me about three weeks of work with very sophisticated security forensic tools. And then I would verify that my laptop is secure until I plugged it into the internet again. <laughs> and then I have to start all over again. Right? So you cannot maintain security on general purpose operating systems. There are two fundamental approaches to solving this. The first one is to physicalize the security. So what you do is you take the coin out of the digital realm and you translate it into a physical form where you can then apply physical security that we know how to do as a species. So for example, and, and this is one of the areas I worked on, um, I developed a startup called Safe Paper Wallets uh, about a year and a half ago with the intention of creating better paper wallets. And it was driven by the most basic entrepreneurial instinct, which is, I need this. <laughs> it's really hard to do. Um, I better figure out a way to do it better. So the idea of a paper wallet is that you generate keys that never touch the network. You do them on an offline system. And you can generate them essentially by uh, picking a random number. The, the search space of the Bitcoin address space is 2 to the 160 bits, uh, two, 2 to the 160 keys, uh, which is a very large number. Let me leave it at that. And, and so you can just pick one at random, and the chances of anybody else picking that one at random are zero. 
and then you print out private and public key on a piece of paper. And you take only the public key and you use it to send money to that public key. To essentially encode a transaction that can only be unlocked by the equivalent private key that never touches the network. Take that piece of paper and you put it in a safe. 